guys, MJ here from Nightcall Singapore. Now, ever since the Nightcall power stations were released, many of you guys have been finding ways to make full use of portable power and the benefits of having portable solar panels. All right. Now, before we begin, I'm giving away one free Nightcall FSP 100 watt portable solar panel worth over $500. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Comment below on how would you use a setup like this. Right, and what would you want to power, all right? So once we hit 600 likes, I'll reply to the winning comment directly below. So over the past months, I've seen some of the struggles that groups and individuals face when integrating their entire setup into their workflow. It could be just extending your time outdoors from charging racing drones to powering lights on an emergency work site, you know, to running outdoor roadshow booths for your business. So in this video, I'll show you what can and cannot be charged by these power stations, how long they can run, and how to effectively use the solar panels to make full use of the energy you collected throughout the day. All right, and at the end, I put together an ultimate power bundle to help you save over $600 and go from zero to fully equipped to make use of portable solar power. All right, so the number one question I get is, hey, can I charge my mini fridge slash vacuum cleaner slash water jet slash whatever device? All right, there was one client that sent us an entire list of devices he was using at his outdoor booth and asked, you know, how long can he run everything for? All right. So the way it works, as long as the total draw of your device does not go above the limit of the power station, you are okay. All right, here's an example. I have several devices charging here, a battery, battery charger and a power bank, All right? So you can see here on the display, right? The output is currently at 24 watts. The more I plug in, the higher the draw will be. The limit for the NES 500 model is actually 500 watts. So as long as this number doesn't go above 500 watts, you're fine. All right, this is how much battery is left remaining inside and this is how long, how many hours the whole unit can run just charging whatever you have plugged in. So the next question is, what happens if I cross 500 watts? All right, nothing will explode, just that some devices will lose power. So in the case of some high-end equipment like medical and measuring devices, it might damage them if you keep cutting power. So if you're gonna use those kind of devices, make sure you have enough output buffer. There's also the NES 300 model here at 300 watts limit. All right, smaller size as you can see compared to the 500. Eventually, you'll see bigger models like the NES 1200 or even the NES 2200 model, right? Those will have a much higher limit at the expense of size and weight, right? You can imagine the 500 is like this. The 2200 model will be much bigger with rollers and his own sort of trolley. Now the next biggest question is, okay, it can power my stuff, but how long can it last? All right, let's say I have this Dyson fan plugged in here. So you can see here it's drawing 16 watts at level one speed, all right? So as I increase the power, at right, level two, level three, you can see that the wattage draw steadily increases all the way up to level 10, all right? At max speed, the fan draws up to 75 watts. Right here, you can see now it's at 60, it's hovering at around that range. All right, so this model is the NES 500. So that means 500 watt hours. So just take 500 divided by 75 watts and you get 6.6. .6. So that's around six hours and 36 minutes. All right, so now you know. You can also get that number here from the display. It changes in real time. So you always know how long the unit can last with whatever you plugged in. All right, it's as simple as that. Right, another good example, one client wanted to power his mini fridge in his SUV, right? So he always have ice cold beer ready for his road trips. Now, most mini fridges draw about 70 watts. So on the NES 300 model like this, just take 300 watts divided by 70 watts and you get 4.2 hours. Now, then you might wonder, hey, four hours is not very long. But remember, mini fridges actually stop drawing power once they hit their desired temperature. So if you don't open it often, yes, it can run a lot longer. If you connect it to the NES 500 model, then it runs for 7 hours. So that's more than enough for a weekend trip or camping or fishing session. You can also charge your station with the included car charger, right? This is the accessories kit. Here's how it comes in. Just pop this open. You got your power brake. And this is the car charger. Yes, the unit can technically live in your truck, van or SUV or however you want to run this setup, okay? So next question is, can I charge the power station while it is in use? Alright, yes, here I plugged it into a wall charger, right? Okay, there. So you can see the input is steadily increasing. Alright, the, the number at the bottom, 13, 14, it'll go all the way up. Alright, it's still climbing, now it's at 54, 55. The output is about 7 watts. 
So again, the real-time display does the maths for you and it tells you exactly how long this setup will last. If it is net positive, meaning the input is more than the output, it will show 999 hours here. But can it power work site specific tools like power tools or pressure washer? So something like this here. Many clients want to power it outdoors to wash their cars. So first we need to find out, hey, what's the wattage draw? Remember, as long as it doesn't cross the limit of the station, you are okay. So if you dig deeper into the technical specs, you'll find the answer here under power consumption. So what is 6A in watts? Alright, use this calculator here. I've linked this in the description below. After crunching the numbers, you realize that, oh wow, the draw is 1320 watts. So now you know, okay, this can't work with the power station. You, you have to use the NES 2200 model, which won't be out till sometime next year. So now you know what can or cannot be used with the power station. The next part is how do you extend the runtime of it outdoors with solar panels? Right now, solar panels have come a long way from where they were 10 years ago. The ones that are made now are far more efficient and portable than anything we've seen. There are two models of solar panels from Nightcore. One is the FSP100W and the FSP100. Ah, here's how both of them look like. Okay. The W version and the non-W version. The W means waterproof. So you, here you can see the materials are different. Right, this is how a 100 watt panel looks like. This is the waterproof version. So you can see that everything is gloss and shinied out because water will just roll off of this surface. Let's fold it back down. Also, you realize there are no solar control controllers anywhere on the front. It's all in the back, hidden in this waterproof sealed zipper. Okay, the only thing coming out of this is the input plug that goes to your power station. Alright, so this is the waterproof version. Now, waterproof doesn't mean you can leave it in the rain and it will still charge. Because if it's raining, the skies will be overcast, there will be no sunlight to convert anyways. Alright, so the waterproof rating is more to prevent water splashes from damaging the unit. If you are using it on a yard, a beach, or you know that sort of application when you're near water. The non-waterproof version is more nylon based, right? It also has a input straight to your power station, plus it has more USB slots here. Alright, USB out here. Alright, okay, this is the 100 watts non-waterproof version. A lot of these are uh, hook and loops for you to hang your panels on. Okay. What about smaller solar panels on the market like this uh, 28 watt NWG panel that we had a giveaway recently? Right, these are great for charging small power banks like the MB10K or 20K, but it will take way too long to charge a power station. And there's no 12 volt output plug, so you, you can't connect them to the power station anyways, alright? So if you're serious about solar power, 100 watts is the minimum, right? As it takes around 2 to 6 hours to fully charge a power station. Right, depending on which model you have, either the NES 300 or NES 500. You can speed up the process by connecting more solar panels using these 5 meter parallel cables for solar panels. Okay, These allow you to daisy chain two solar panels together and have one output connecting straight to your power station. Right, Each 100 watt solar panel will average around 60 to 70 watts in good weather, clear sky, direct sunlight. Right, the max charging speed of the power station is around 160 watts. So three solar panels will let you hit the maximum charging speed. Now you might be wondering, wow, three panels is a bit of an overkill, isn't it? It's actually not, right? Especially during rainy or cloudy seasons where clear skies are limited, right? You want to make the most out of it. So if you only get two hours of good direct sunlight in a day, then three panels will let you make the most of it or will give you better power during cloudy or sunset conditions than one panel would. Right, the whole point is to reduce charging time and maximize the available sunlight. Now this pairing is okay, right? But what if I want to use the solar panel by itself? Right, maybe my unit is fully charged and I don't want to waste the sunlight. You can use this SPM10 solar controller unit, also by Nightcore. Right, this lets you plug the 12 volt output cable from the solar panel to the solar controller. So you can tell exactly how much power the solar panel is generating. Right, there you go. So now, of course, there's no sunlight, so nothing is on here. But once everything is connected, this will be able to tell you, you know, how much watts is coming without the help of the power station. Right? It also converts that power to USB-C and USB-A outputs here. Okay, perfect for charging your smaller power banks and devices. It also has an Anderson input port right here, this red and black one. So you can connect those non 
portable 100 watt solar panels and convert those into USB output. Right, very very useful when you're running a lot of devices outdoor. It helps you manage your power more efficiently. Right, this is the SPM10 solar controller. Right, so that's basically it. Everything you need to power your gear outdoors and to keep them running for extended periods with solar power. All right, it's literally free and unlimited as long as you have good weather and sunlight. All right, one power station, one solar panel, and if you're serious, you can upgrade to two or three solar panels, parallel cables, and 10 meter extension cables so you can run the solar panel further away from your power station. So you can keep this in the shade and keep this in the sun. You can add the solar controllers, more power stations, all right, it's all up to you. Now it might seem expensive, but when you compare it with a $30,000 home solar roof setup, this is very inexpensive for the portability it affords you. Right, so one of the military clients asked, hey, is this whole setup waterproof, right? Will it survive water crossing? No, right, you need a big waterproof bag, like the ones from uh, overboard, the 20 liter or 30 liter ones that fit the power station perfectly. Or you can also use Nightcore's very own waterproof bag, the WDB20, right, which also fits one or two power stations perfectly. So some of you are asking if it can be kept in a hot car. No, it can go up to 80 degrees inside a car under the hot sun. So high temperatures are the number one killer of battery life and capacity. Right, it drastically lowers the capacity and affects how fast it charges and discharges. The operating temperature of the station is minus 10 to 40 degrees. So avoid leaving it in high temperatures at all times. Use the 10 meter extension cable here and keep the panel in the sun and the power station in the shade. Right, it's very, very important you do that. So if you've been thinking about a setup like this, this is the best time to get started as these portable panels used to cost thousands and thousands some years back right but now Nightcore has made them accessible enough for the everyday person to buy and use. I've put all these together in an unlimited power bundle to help you hit the ground running with solar power and using them daily. Alright all you gotta do is order the NES 500 at $1,199 Singapore dollars right and you get the 100 watt waterproof solar panel here all right with the 10 meter extension cable here all right these bonuses are worth $657. You get them completely free. All right. You can also get the whole bundle in three installments of $399 per month. Right? There's an insane bundle here that you cannot find anywhere else. Really, you cannot find this anywhere else. I know this is a little bit crazy. That's why I only have about 20 sets of these bundles available at nightcallites.com. Once they're gone, we may not have them in this configuration again. All right. So once your order is placed, we'll correct everything to your door within a couple of days. Links to all this in the description below. As usual, this comes with our Nightcore 60 day satisfaction guarantee, so there's no risk at all. all right, that's it. I'm super excited to see how you guys use your portable setup and happy to help you get started on this journey. All right, so stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. All right, MJ signing out.